Welcome back to my Genie 5519 rebuild project. Now this project is starting to get a little more exciting now that I finished tearing down the unit far enough to get an idea of what parts I need to order. This was a multi-month process and I wanted to share with you what that looked like for me. This has been a user requested video in the heavy equipment forum so I'm finally at a point where I can share how I ordered and sourced replacement parts. I'm going to take a deep dive into that process in hopes they can help some of you out who need to buy parts for your own projects. Now it is no secret that vendors overcharge for parts as this is a large revenue stream for them. And I can agree with that to a point, but Genie's parts have to be the absolute worst that I've encountered when it comes to price markups. So the next part can be either fun or a pain depending on how much time you are willing to sink into part sleuthing. Most of you probably know this, but most parts on any machine are from another manufacturer or vendor and are simply rebranded with a new part number from the maker of the unit, and in this case that's Genie. When comparing cat parts to Genie parts, cat puts a cat specific part number on every single part, whereas Genie seems to just leave the original markings on the parts. This can both be a blessing and a curse. It's great if down the line you want to order parts directly from the original part manufacturer, but as I found out, if you were to have a box of new parts from Genie, you can't open a parts book and figure out where it goes unless you have some method to cross-reference this new part with an original Genie part number. This is probably not a big deal if you're just replacing one or two parts at a time, but when you ordered hundreds of parts like I did, I found out it just adds another level of complexity. So now let's dive into my process. One of the first things I did was go onto the Genie website and download all the manuals, parts books, and diagrams that I could get my hands on. I also went to different auction sites and downloaded all the images I could find of my specific model number since the fire had completely destroyed components and I needed a reference for what was missing and what they should look like once they're installed. So just a little side note here, I had a little beef with the Genie manuals and parts diagrams. They do not show the routing or path of cables and hoses like you would find in a typical Caterpillar manual. Once I had a nice library, I printed out the entire parts book and took it out to the machine. As I was tearing things down, I was going through the parts book page by page, highlighting everything that I needed a new part of. Once I had everything marked up that I thought I needed, I generated a spreadsheet so I could keep track of it. Here you'll see the Genie part number and the drawing number for my reference, as well as a brief description. I used tmsequipment.com as a base for retail pricing on everything, and then I would search each one of these part numbers and record the best internet price on website I found it on. As you can imagine, this was a very time consuming process. Once I had a good understanding of pricing, I started looking more in depth at the components I believed were overpriced or that I thought would be something I could cross reference for another part. I'll give you guys just one quick example of this. Here's an electrical component that was completely missing since it burnt up. First I found it in the Genie Park catalog and looked up the price. You can see it retails for $374.07. I found a reference picture on an auction site and was able to zoom in and find the part number. Since it is an electronic component, I head over to digikey.com and search for that part number and boom, $76.75. That's a savings of almost $300 or almost a 400% markup assuming they were paying retail price on these components. One of the worst contenders I found was a hydraulic cylinder block that I was able to pay $180 from Bosch Rexroth, which Genie wanted $5,500 for the exact same component. Keep in mind at this point I had not finished price sleuthing, but you can already see the major difference between the retail prices and some of the ones I was able to find. One thing that was pretty helpful was using Genie's online parts book. Some of the parts did have pictures, which made finding some of these parts a lot easier. Genie did something in the parts book, which I really liked as well. They did a good job calling out hose sizes as well as nut and bolt sizing. Most manufacturers will just say, for example, bolt with a part number, but Genie will say something like screw M6 by 28.8, which tells me that it's an M6 threaded screw, 20 millimeters long and grade 8.8. So I was able to compile a list of all the hardware and order what I needed from boltdepot.com. Here you can see if I was to order the hardware from Genie, it would have been $784.09, and from Bolt Depot, it was just $79.49. While I was part sleuthing and searching for a motor, I came across a brand new one sitting in an Ahern parts warehouse. I called them and talked to them about it, and they had purchased a motor for a Genie 5519 rebuild, but they didn't end up doing it, so they had it just sitting on the shelf for years. 
They wanted to move the engine, so they sold to me for 10300 And at this point, I had already talked to several Deutz dealers, and I knew a new engine from them was around 16 k and pricing to fix my engine came around 14 k before any labor. So to me, this was kind of a no-brainer. Yes, it was more than I wanted to spend, but it was a guaranteed drop in replacement. I had found some motors on eBay that were you know, close to the same model number, but they had weird configurations. And I just knew that that was gonna be a ton of work to get them to fit. You know, so for a couple grand more, I had a brand new engine that was guaranteed to work. And also it was coming from a reputable dealer. So if anything went wrong, I could go back to them and get support. So the real connection out of this is that Ahern ended up connecting me to a parts broker in Las Vegas they used called Equipments Parts Plus. I ended up sending them a list of genius specific parts that I hadn't been able to source and almost everything on the list came back lower price than the best internet price I could find. I'm not affiliated with Ahern or EPP, but after all my hours and hours of research, they seem to be the best deal around for genie branded parts that you can't source directly from the original part maker. If any of you have great sources on parts, please let me know in the comments below. Once I had my list back from EPP, I placed my parts order and things slowly began to start trickling in. Yay, an engine showed up. With miscellaneous things. So while we wait for the rest of our parts to show up, we're gonna start sending stuff to powder coating. They're trying to charm here. This is the third time they've tried to send me this seal. It's supposed to be one continuous piece. Hey, look at that. One continuous piece, 311 inches long. There are miracles. So just a quick backstory on this. Yes, you did hear that right. This did take them three times in about a month to get this correct. They kept sending me little bits and pieces of the seal in one foot and two foot sections instead of one continuous piece. What's the point of having a weather tight seal if it's chopped into a bunch of little bitty pieces? A few more things. I think we've got some glass and then a box of mystery parts. Just the rubber mounts for the engine belt. A lot of miscellaneous hardware. Hey, hey, this does include. Does include yeah, it includes all the relays and everything. So, that is fantastic news. All right, I'm currently headed down to my buddy's warehouse who took delivery graciously of the tires for this thing. They gave me the tracking number. It said it was gonna be there on Monday, which was fine. So I waited around for that and then that didn't happen. And then they said they updated to Tuesday and then that didn't happen. And then I called them and said, you know, I pushed my trip back. That's when we were gonna go pick up the goat and that I couldn't be there on Wednesday. Like that was the one day I couldn't be there. I said, no problem, we'll go ahead and move it to Thursday. Lo and behold, they delivered on Wednesday or at least attempted to. And what's weird is they didn't tell anybody. They just left them in the alley, which is kind of not cool. They also told me that they required a forklift, which is why I had to be around. They couldn't just drop them by the, the roll-up door. So I figured that there was no way that they were gonna leave them but my friend happened to drive by and was like i think i see your tires sitting in the alley so that's not great so luck i was like hey can you please use a pallet jack and at least bring them inside so he did clearly the shop's only a couple miles from my house and we'll put them in the back and uh, another thing off the list so here we go motor cover looks like another thing received all right it's exciting we are headed to pick up powder coating this is way different because i dropped this powder coating off tuesday afternoon and today's friday 
I thought it'd be at least a week and they called me earlier this morning and said it was done. That's exciting because the last powder coating place I took it to took like two months to do the same amount of work, maybe even less. That's good news. You know, just to be transparent, I spent $12.50 on this powder coating. I don't know if that's a good price or a bad price. Uh, it's just the place was convenient, so I took it there. It seemed reasonable, especially since they had to do some things that uh, the pieces were too heavy to handle by person and they needed to be done with a forklift. I figure you pay extra for that kind of work. At least that's kind of what I expect. So headed to the powder coater place, you know, got my mask because we're in COVID time. So, let's go get it. So here's all the parts laid out. Some things are still wrapped up. Man, it's gonna look good. Thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and lets me know you want to see more videos. If you have some tips or tricks on sourcing parts, please leave a comment below and I'll catch you on the next one.